Well, first off, just excited to be back. You know, just something in the air again. It's spring ball time and there's tons of excitement really around our football program. But before that, I just wanted to issue some quick shout outs. I mean, obviously, our men's basketball program is really proud of, you know, putting the Cougs on their back. And it's just amazing to watch an NCAA tournament, even a little of this morning's news is just so proud of this whole program and you just how the Cougs have rallied here, obviously, behind them. And Cami Etheridge, another 20 win. Uh, season and excited for their journey to continue this Thursday and coach Leach and our swimming and diving program just excited about what everyone's doing this time of year and excited to get back to the grass I know uh, you know one of the biggest things when we came back and evaluated ourselves from last season you know we need to be a tougher football team and I think to do that you got to put them through a really tough process coach Ben Anakione and his staff have been vital to our success of the last 10 weeks and doing a variety of different things. I know our team is bigger, they're faster, they're stronger, but how is that going to relate to the football field? That's exactly uh, what I'm excited to see, some strengths and weaknesses of this new team. And as we continue to form uh, what we're going to be like in this football season, it's going to be the most competitive spring since I've been at the helm. And even since I've been here in the last five years, excited to get some of these uh, position battles really rolling and it's going to be exciting. So we're going to maximize these 15 practices uh, two scrimmages, obviously the spring game on April 27th. Excited that Gardner Minshew will be joining us as well for the spring football festivities and excited for a great uh, spring on the Palouse. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions. We'll start with uh, Jamie. Go ahead, Jamie. Coach, uh, kind of the first question I'm kind of curious about, um, when you, you mentioned kind of the, the competitiveness and the, the battles you'll see this spring, for you personally, what battles are you kind of really looking forward to watching in terms of maybe one or two spots you think are going to be uh, extra competitive, um, even though, of course, you said all are going to be competitive? Well, yeah. I mean, once again, Jamie, it's it's a, it's great to hear your voice. And I don't know if you caught it. But practices are starting at 730 instead of 645. So I think it's going to be a really, really exciting time for both of us. Uh, but competitive-wise, Jamie, let's look at – I'll narrow some down, but – we got to figure out who's going to be the starting quarterback. Running back is going to be a heck of a competition. Uh, offensive line, you know, Falili will be out all spring. Uh, to see some of these young guys and their development is really exciting for me as a coach. Uh, wide receiver, who's going to be out there opposite Kyle Williams on the outside? And who's going to take over those inside receiver reps and touches that are really vital in our offense? Uh, defensive tackle, who's going to replace RJBJ at defensive end? Can we elevate the linebacker position? Obviously, Sam Lockett and Hicks to replace those guys is going to be a challenge and add replacing Lampkin and Shaw on the outside. So obviously, the quarterback position will get a lot of the attention, Jamie. The one thing I have said about every position, not a single job will be won out of this spring. Uh, so I want to make sure our guys are out there. They're playing fast, especially new guys to our program. They understand there's going to be a learning curve. I want them out there failing often, going out there and not making the same mistakes twice, but growing within our football program. But obviously, John and, and Zevi and Evans and Jackson and all of our quarterbacks in that room, it's going to be a heck of a competition as we go throughout spring. I'm excited to see Ashton Tripp as a young guy. Uh, we firmly placed him behind Essa. He's going to be a heck of a challenge. Those guys battling things out and creating some more depth in our offensive line. Obviously, Leo Javinsky, Wayshawn Parker as a mid-year enrollee has been just phenomenal uh, so far. So excited to see him, you know, make that transition and see what he can apply out there on the football field. Cyrus Webster has blown all of us away as far as what he can do at one of those edge positions. Move, moving Noosey out there really creates a little bit of a log jam of who's going to, you know, rise out of that edge competition. And we're excited about that. And then strong safety is a crux position within our defense. We've moved Jackson Latemua. Uh, he's getting over a hernia, hernia surgery that he had in early January. He'll be limited early in camp. Uh, but excited for all those guys from Tanner Moku to Reese Sylvester on down to see who's going to take reins at a very pivotal position within our defense. So it's going to be an exciting spring. We're going to have tons of conversations to be had just like this, Jamie, and excited to really get to the next phase of seeing these guys as football players. I absolutely noticed the later start, Tom. It was uh, it's a good day when I saw that. Um, <laughs> You know, you talk a little bit about uh, guys like Latimua and Lely. Uh, who else do you kind of anticipate at least being a little bit limited during uh, the early part of spring ball? 
Lawrence Palatea is still going to be uh, in more of an indie protocol. You might see him in some one-on-one -on -one situations towards the end. Uh, Rashad McKenzie, still recovering from a knee, will be very much just staying in the indie frame until we get through this summer. Uh, Kapena Gushikin also had a hernia surgery, but he feels like he's on the later stages of that, so he should be ready to go earlier than not. Uh, so those are the kind of the names right now. Uh, besides some little dings through the winter that we should be, you know, healthy and excited about it and ready to go. All right. Next question comes from Greg Wood. Greg, go ahead. Jake, how are you, man? Greg, I'm doing well. I know you guys have been busy. I appreciate the time. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you. I, uh, I, I'm curious about the uh, receiver position, which it seems like there's like, you know, a million new names that you guys are trying to have to uh, incorporate there. Um, I know you probably don't want to single anybody out, but just in terms of like what you're looking for, what is that going to look like right now? Well, right now we need to, you know, have Kyle Williams take his game to the next level. I mean, that's kind of focused on in his part as a veteran leader. Carlos Hernandez has probably made the biggest jump from a freshman last year to now getting into where he's going to go through really his second spring as a mid-year enrollee. Josh Meredith has elevated his game tremendously. I'm excited to see Chris Hudson. He's got all the tools. And he's putting it together on and off the field. And it's been really, really exciting to see our winter phase with him, as well as Kyle Maxwell, Trey Shackelford. It's it's time to really see these guys in action. So uh, Kyle Maxwell will be a little, little limited as we start uh, through a groin injury. But there's some guys with experience, but how do they fit into what we're doing? And I think that's going to be the competitive nature of everyone at all those positions. So it's going to be one of those sort out processes that, you know, day to day, we'll see who's kind of rising to the crop, but more importantly, who can be consistent. And, you know, one of the biggest things uh, of emphasis is we got to take the ball down the field. You know, I'm really confident in our short passing game and some of those things that we did last year, but not enough explosive plays down the field. And I believe we have explosive people. And I think uh, our quarterback room is going to prove that they can throw the deep ball with tremendous accuracy. So it'll still be Greg getting that really gel period out, you know, early in camp. And then when we get to, you know, practice eight through 12 is going to be big for that offensive skill to really just see if we're in rhythm. And then what is uh, uh, Lily dealing with again? Lily, all the way back to fall camp, was going through a, a right knee issue and really gutted out the whole season with tremendous strength and passion. And, you know, but we have a bigger picture to fulfill and that's his future. So we had to, you know, get in there and clean it up. And, and when you do some of those things, you find some things that, you know, weren't as good as you thought they were. So we, we got him completely restructured in that knee and, and uh, I think it will be the best for his future and he'll be ready to go sometime this summer. All right, as a reminder, please raise your hand if you have a question. We'll call on you. Uh, next one, Andrew Quinn. Go ahead, Andrew. Hey, Jake. Um, I was just wondering, you know, you spoke about the quarterback room, bringing in Zevi and bringing in these freshmen. How excited are you to see those guys push John in, in spring practice? And just your thoughts on the quarterback room overall as you guys really get going here? Well, I do think it's a great question because the one thing we weren't willing to do recruiting anybody was just tell them that we're going to give them the job, right? We're going to come in and compete. We had someone in-house that we feel very strongly about that has the intangible ability to go out there and execute our offense, maybe to a higher degree than even we've been the last couple of years. Even talking to Coach Arbuckle, it's a different room. I mean, Zevi is a professional in everything he does. I mean, he is quick, he's sharp, he's articulate, he understands protections. And Evans Chuba, you know, coming in as a mid-year enrollee, uh, you know, you see him run around in some of the lines, you think he's a defensive end with how athletic he is, yet he can really sling the football so – Jackson Potter and that whole group. So it's just going to be exciting to really formulate the foundation of our offense. Yet everyone's going to have different strengths that we got to make sure we tool uh, and use John's running ability. You know, Zebby's good job and just a lot of variety of things he can do. Same thing with Evans running the football, you know, so there'll be a different things that we got to shape the offense, especially in some of these scrimmages to their strengths. But like I said, it's going to be a heck of a competition. This thing will go up all the way up to game week in the fall and, you know, once again, they got to relax and go out there and play. Who can command the, off command the offense? Who can go out there and earn leadership roles within our uh, offense? And, and who's going to kind of command 
and raise the level of everybody else around them. So those are the things that we're looking for early on. And, you know, whoever's out there first, you know, probably be John, but it'll be a, a mixing of rotations as we go throughout the spring. And then noticing uh, Leighton Smithson as a defensive back on your roster, just kind of what was the thought process behind moving him to defense? And how do you think his skill set will fit that new position? Well, to be honest, I mean, we actually first recruited him to translate from a high school quarterback to a free safety. We've done this many times and we just had a huge need at receiver uh, when we first started, you know, our program here. And just through the last couple of years that we just kind of felt like his skill set would really fit over more in a defensive realm. He's been a special teams ace for us the last couple of years and want to grow him in there. And I think we got a needed free safety. I think it's one of the biggest positions that we got to figure out what we're going to do there. So we wanted to add him to the mix. It was received with open arms. I mean, we've even talked about it midway through last season. So excited about his development, how he's trained. I uh, got to give him some leeway to kind of get out some of the the calls and the understanding of being a defensive back. But, you know, he brings, you know, sub 11 speed in from high school and I think he's only developed and had a really good winter training session. So excited about what he can do and just kind of the vision of the program. We got to continually find what's best for the individual and what's best for the team. And, and Leighton was, you know, gun, gun hole kind of moving himself to free safety. All right. Next question. Julian minutes. Julian, go ahead. Hey, Jake, thanks for taking the time. I just was wondering uh, what, when you're a coach coaching a division one program like this, and you jump into spring for the first time here, what's the, what are you looking for? I guess in the early moments of, of a spring camp, like what are the things you're like, Hey, this is what I want to see. Well, I want to see the preparation really shine through. I mean, we spent a lot of time in the last couple of weeks of really building into this spring ball, probably more than we have uh, in the past. So knowing we have a younger team, uh, but not, and more of an inexperienced team, but a team that we feel very confident in. You know, I, I want to reiterate that. I want to see great energy, you know, be constant and consistent as we go throughout spring ball. And one of the biggest things is we got to put finish on tape. We talked about being a tougher team. That's seen, not heard. And I really mean that. We've talked a lot about our football team about that. And, uh, you know, excited about what that looks like. Iron has to sharpen iron. When we're in this phase – you know, we don't have an opponent that's going to be coming in here on a Saturday. It's us. So we've been really, really focused on us and what we need to do and the process it takes to win football games. That's what I want to see really come to fruition. And I'm excited about this team. You know, I'm excited about their goals, their aspirations, but it's one day at a time. And we can consistently string together 15 really strong practices this spring. We're going to see those results come fall. And then uh, at least my last thing for you, the continuity of the staff, of course, uh, and how huge that has been. And, and also another, I guess, a two-parter, another season with Ben at strength and conditioning and, and what you hope to see when it comes to that department too. Well, I'll start there. I, I think, you know, the, the strength and conditioning coach, being in lockstep with the vision of the head coach in the program is vital if you want to have any sort of success at this level. And that's what Ben and I have. Uh, I'm really excited about growing him in his role. He's taken more of an active role with the rest of our coaches. Uh, he's in all of our staff meetings, and he really is the link and one of the main guys that carries on our culture. What you do down in that weight room shows up on Saturdays. You know, so for us to be in year two, but not just say, hey, let's rinse and repeat. Let's grow and get better. I think that's what we've done as a whole football coaching staff. So obviously bringing in Coach Caster at offensive line, uh, here in the last four to five weeks is, you know, been a process of getting him caught up to speed, but I also love some of the things that he's bringing in. He's got a great energy about him. He's reliant on fundamental and technique and offensive line is a group that we have been working our tail off on the last three years. And it's time to cash in on that work, but it can't be the same. We got to take a step forward. Um, coach Allen Brown, uh, to have coach to coach Browns again at, at corner, but, uh, loved his energy so far, loved his passion, loved his attention to detail. And he's had about three weeks to get our schemes down and decided to put those guys through the process. And like I said, there's been tons of learns from last season, guys. I'm not, not going to take that lightly. We really looked hard in the mirror what we needed to do consistently to get better. And obviously retaining the talent was number one and adding to it in certain ways like we feel like we've done and, and we're ready to take that next step in the football program this season. Yeah, as a reminder, please raise your hand if you have a question. We're calling you. Uh, Jamie, go ahead. 
Coach, remember last year you talked a lot about how Christian Hilborn was kind of the guy that really had stood out in the uh, in the weight room and maybe had made the biggest strides in that regard. Um, who would you say that is uh, from this past winter? Well, well, first off, I want to talk about Christian a little bit. Uh, if I had to list a rank of guys on guys that have really grown and matured, Christian would be number one on that list. He has developed himself in the last 10 weeks and into one of the best leaders on this football team. And I'm excited about his continued growth. Uh, because, you know, once again, it's a guy that's played a ton, but that doesn't always mean just because you you play that you've really grown into that leadership role and responsibility. He's really taken that on, and I'm really proud of that kid, even though you mentioned him. Um, you know, like younger guys that have been in our developmental process, uh, Khalil Laufau, Ansel Dinbu at the defensive tackle position have been just incredible to see their growth. Ram Stevenson has been carrying 243 pounds plus, really the last eight weeks and looks like a different human being. I can't even, I can't even describe it. The Luke and Landon Rotens, uh, those guys that are finally, you know, Ashton Tripp, you know, I still, still, he's a young guy and I keep mentioning him, but it's just so impressive what he's doing physically. It's, you know, Andre Dollar comes to mind that, you know, Tariq Alupta, you know, has one of his best springs both on and off the field. So, but so many guys just like that, Jamie, that, you know, while they are inexperienced, we've been putting them through this process a long time. And, you know, our guys are are hungry to be out there. And that's an exciting place to be. Outside of uh, of Leighton and Jackson, who I know we talked about um, in, in recent weeks and months, uh, any other late position changes, even if it's just guard to tackle or so on? Well, I think you see Nathan Pritchard uh, at guard, uh, as I look at it. Um, Johnny Lester will be at tackle. I'm not sure how he kind of reads on, on some of your stuff. You know, Josh Meredith, uh, Chris Hudson will be inside. You know, I think other than that, it should be pretty straightforward there, uh, with Jamie. Okay, next question, Andrew Quinn. Go ahead, Andrew. Hey, Jake, uh, just wanted to, last one for me, talk about the defense a little bit, you know, losing BJ, RJ, Sean, Jaden, who have you seen from a leadership standpoint step into that role? I know you guys still have Quinn and Nusi and Andrew and some of these guys and Kyle, but who else have you kind of seen step up and, and try and provide at least some of the leadership that those guys did for your team? Well, I want to just make sure everyone understands it's different leadership. And I think we've recognized that as a staff, you know, you don't have, Maybe those dominating personalities just through, you know, when you're a good player, I think a lot of influence is given to you. And I think that's an important part of it. But I think we got a bunch of guys that are doing it maybe in their own way, in a different way. And I don't I don't say that as a knock to anybody else, but to say that it's been a little bit different. And you know, like Cyrus Webster for a new guy really comes to mind and how he's established himself, I think, as an early leader on that side of the ball. Kyle Thornton, I think, is the big one that stands out to all of us is kind of the guy that's really established himself as the leader on that side and what a lot of guys really look to. Uh, Nusi Milani, uh, Jackson Latemu, I think, has stepped up in a variety of different ways. And I'm still excited to develop that leadership. And I don't really look at that as a bad thing at all. I think we just got a different group of guys this year. And, you know, I've said this before on here. I mean, we don't have any all-conference players returning from last season. And that would scare a lot of people. But we've put these guys through a process and we're really excited about their developmental growth. So I think that would be a great question after spring ball. I think when you put a new team through a bunch of winter conditions drills, you see some of that come out, but I want to see who we are when adversity hits. When we drop that ball, when we miss that blocking assignment, when we get beat over the top, when we don't do something that's always great on tape, I want to see how we respond then. I think that's when our leadership will really shine. Next question. Sam Taylor with the Evergreen. Go ahead, Sam. Go ahead, Sam. Sam, you there? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I think I was muted for a bit. Um, thanks so much for making the time. I was wondering if you could talk about uh, Jahad Woods and his journey from a uh, player to scout to now defensive GA. Yeah, I mean, I, I think one thing I do pride myself on is, is hiring Cougs and guys that have given back to this football program and Hopefully we'll have the ability to continue that as we go throughout our journey here. And, you know, Jihad's one of those guys that has done a lot for this football program. And I remember a distinct conversation with him after his playing days were over, you know, through a short NFL deal is, 
you know, he kind of was like, where are you at now? And he didn't really have that plan. And I know he wanted to coach, uh, but I said, hey, I got this role in scouting department I want you to fill. And as we go throughout time, if you prove to me that you're willing to put in the work here in this role, uh, when a spot opens on the field, we'll we'll kind of move you into it. And uh, that is what happened this season. There's a GA position that opened up. Excited for the value that he brings to our football team. I think his relatability to the guys, I see you guys all the time in his office watching extra tape, uh, just really good. And I think he's done a good job in his new role, and I'm excited about his journey. I think there's a lot of players that think they want to get into coaching until they see what it really is. And I think him and George Hicks and you know, done a good job in their roles and excited about their coaching journey. But I've always seen something very special in Jihad and excited to partner with them now on the coaching side. Or were some other qualities you saw in Jihad that persuaded you that, you know, he he could be right for this role and that he could put well, in that I, time? I think that starts all the way as a, as a player, you know, someone that wanted to put in the time to learn it, uh, I think was always coachable. I think he has great relatability. I think we've always worked on his leadership skills since the moment I've been here. And there's just some things that, hey, you know, when I, I come in the office, you know, he's still working late in, in the scouting role and and I think he's really taken the task, the responsibility of what it takes to be a GA and he doesn't want to let us down. You know, I think the biggest thing I've learned is it's about getting the right people on the bus. Because when you have the right people, they'll understand what it takes to do the role the right way. And there will be a willing learner. And Jihad is that. He's a coup through and through. He understands what it takes to be in Pullman and coming from a long ways away. And he's a great ambassador for us. So he's the right person for the job and excited for the journey. Thank you. And, and one last question um, from me. I cited a lot of the basketball games this year. What inspiration uh, can you and, and did you take from those programs and what they have and, and then for the women's side continue to do this year? Well, I think I, I enjoy it first and foremost. You know, this isn't something I just do for no reason. I, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy sharing, you know, those moments with my family too. But I also understand what it takes and how hard it can be, you know, to, to see those two programs continue to thrive is – is great inspiration for us. And as soon as you know, that game was over uh, Saturday evening, we know it's our time. It's time for football to step up and take over the mantle and deliver. And we're excited about that. We're going through that process right now. So like I said, it's just inspiring for me what we're capable of. And I think uh, even through transition, we've shown when something great happens, Cougs are going to be there. And we can pack Beasley. And we can support our programs like no other. And we got to continue to do that regardless of the situation and circumstance. So that's what I draw from it. Uh, the women's program is not done. And they have a great opportunity to finish their season really, really strong as a tournament champion. And I think that's an awesome position to be in. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Next question, Greg Woods. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I... Uh... Several new coaches for you to kind of mess with um, that you've hired recently. Is that a thing that like you can do just over time or like, what does that process look like when you're getting, you know, spring started like this? Well, I, I think Greg, this, the process really starts with how we hire, you know, I don't spend two hours on a zoom and hire somebody, you know, we go through a distinct process of a zoom interview. We still are old school. We get people on campus and, even though the time maybe in other people's mind was dwindling down, you know, I want to make sure once again, we got the right person and you don't do that. Just interviewing one person on zoom for two hours. So we put in the time to get it right. Uh, coach Caster and coach Brown, I think are the right people for our program. Obviously coach Brown is very familiar with, you know, our area of the country being, you know, from Washington and an Eastern Washington grad. And obviously coach Arbuckle and coach Caster had a, you know, a lot of familiarity with each other and, some time at uh, HBU down there in Houston. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is a step up and an opportunity for us to grow our program. Anytime there's transitions, you know, it's an opportunity to grow a program and bring some outside ideas in and find a way to get better. So giving those guys some leeway and understanding, but my job is to create clarity for those guys at every, you know, turn possible from the recruiting realm to the coaching realm. I always tell them, you know, I'm going to be upfront and honest with what ways that we can get better. I've been really pleased with where they're at so far and excited about their journey as we get into practice one tomorrow. Did you uh, get an invite to BJ's wedding? <laughs> I didn't see him the other day. I congratulated him. I, I was 
hope. Okay, that's in the mail, but uh, he was getting started on that journey. He's not getting married till that summer, but uh, great story. Really excited for him. And uh, uh, obviously, Pro Day is uh, Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be at the University of Idaho just because of our indoor situation and with the weather. But excited for those guys to take the next step in the journey. And more importantly, because these are a lot of guys that we develop in our football program. Really, really proud of this class of guys, and they're going to represent Cougs really, really well. It's going to be an exciting draft night. I know that. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. All right. Uh, any final questions for Coach Dicker? Here's your last chance. Well, I appreciate everybody. Excited to get back out on the field, bring your rain gear for tomorrow morning. It's going to be fun when we start off on the right deal. So go Cougs. Thank you, everyone.